So I'm John Russell. I'm running for Congress in Ohio's 12th district, special election for an open seat. Uh, I'm a farmer and a tree stump grinder from Galena, Delaware County. Been doing that the last five years. If you don't have your health, you don't have anything, right? And this is an issue everybody deals with. And uh, yeah, it was one that I was proud to stand with you and everybody else in Indivisible to uh, fight for all last year. Um, I ran for state representative last year, and after the election, like a lot of people, I knew that uh, the Affordable Care Act was on the chopping block. And uh, Indivisible groups popped up all over the country to fight for that act and save our health care. There's a group in every congressional district. Ours has 4,000 members. And we won battles on that that everybody thought were lost causes and saved health care that a lot of people really count on. Uh, so that was really encouraging. And, but we need to continue that fight because while uh, the Affordable Care Act made a lot of really good improvements there, it, 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 the, the health care system is still broken. And I feel that personally just like everybody else. I'm on the Obamacare marketplace. What I would fight for in Congress is universal single-payer health care because uh, other countries use this model uh, and it, uh, for all kinds of reasons, makes much-needed improvements over the system we have now. Some of those are making sure that dollars, you know, our health care dollars actually go towards delivering health care instead of paying for CEO salaries or drug advertisements we all see on the TV. Um, making sure that you don't have to hold down a job that you don't like just for the health care. And I was talking to a small manufacturer in the district uh, who says what I hear and what I do myself uh, from a lot of small businesses. And that is that every business is budgeting for the enormous cost of American health care. And they're building that into the price of doing business. Going to a single payer system would lift that burden off of businesses and make them more competitive. Um, we have models of single payer care working in our country, Medicare, TRICARE, uh, both of which have really high satisfaction rates, uh, low overhead costs. Uh, they're much more efficient than the private sector at delivering care and results. And we should expand those to all people. We have no problem affording a trillion and a half dollar tax bill uh, that handed billions out to a fraction of the country that's already doing really well. It's a matter of priorities. And uh, if we stopped practices like that, that would help us pay for it. But consider this, transitioning what we already spend on healthcare to public systems would be one of the best ways to save trillions of dollars on healthcare spending uh, and deliver care to everybody that eliminates ridiculous medical bills. For me, um, I am a gun owner, I'm a farmer, um, and I grew up in rural Ohio that has, you know, a, a gun culture. I, I grew up with that and understand what that means. But the fact is, while we have the right to own guns, we also have the right to stay safe, to stay alive in public places, in schools and churches and movie theaters and all the places that gun violence has, has visited. And, um, you know, I understand I've got three nieces who go into a movie theater and look for the exits. And there's just, there's, there's two that shouldn't be a reality that they have to deal with. So there are things that we can do. Starting with the bare minimum, we have to uh, support universal background checks. We have to close the gun show loophole. 40% uh, of all gun sales go through that loophole out of the background check system. And um, the vast majority of gun owners support closing that. I'd support that in Congress. Uh, second, I think we should restrict sales to uh, people with violence in their backgrounds, uh, violent convictions, things that we know overlap with gun violence, like domestic uh, violence in the past. We have to have ownership standards 
uh, for things like that. And uh, we should uh, reach across the aisle too because while Governor Kasich hasn't had the best record always, he's come out in support of red flag laws. And I would push for those in Congress so that next of kin, the people know that know you best, uh, can petition courts to make sure that, uh, you know, guns are not falling into the hands of people that are dealing with uh, personal problems. And lastly, uh, we should look into uh, the assault weapons ban that we did in 1994 and make sure that uh, when we're renewing that, regulations are tied to firepower of the weapon, not just the style. We knew what was coming here. So what they did was uh, hand out a trillion and a half dollars to these huge global corporations that have never had more cash on the balance sheet than right now. And by the way, a lot of these companies, uh, America's biggest companies, multinational corporations, they have unfunded pensions. They uh, have... You know, they're some of America's biggest employers. They made obligations, uh, they made promises to their workers, and they are not funding those pensions adequately. Uh, and I'd like to point out that a good use of those billions that were handed out to corporations, trillions on the whole, could have gone to the workers who are counting on retirement benefits. Uh, so with this uh, tax policy, uh, we knew that they were going to be okay, uh, you know, tacking on a trillion and a half dollars uh, to the deficit and ultimately the debt. And what we now know is that to pay for that, they will come back uh, this year and say, we have to cut Medicare, we have to cut Social Security, we cannot afford these programs that you have been paying into all of this time uh, because we were irresponsible with the tax bill. Uh, and that's just not true. If we hadn't done that in the first place, uh, we wouldn't be in the situation we are now. But on, on, on taxes going forward, we pay taxes to invest in this country. And a big part of my campaign is going to be about renewing the commitments to public investments that built this country to begin with. The hallmarks of my campaign will be uh, putting people to work on infrastructure. That's a public investment where we get something and uh, put people to work earning good money. Uh, investing in an, a national health care program, single-payer care. Uh, that's one that can ease the budgets of everybody and deliver great outcomes. And uh, reinvesting in public colleges. Everybody, you know, students are going away for four years and coming out with the ball and chain of student loan debt, and that shouldn't be the case. The fraction of this tax bill that went out to ordinary people was so small compared to the amount that we handed over to giant companies that have more cash than they have had in years. And by the way, enjoy more influence over our Congress than they've had in years. And they don't need more help that money could have uh, gone directly back to working people. It could have paid for some of the public investments in roads and bridges and education and healthcare uh, that I've been talking about. And it's worth noting too that uh, everybody saw on TV members of the GOP openly saying that if we don't pass this tax bill, our donors are going to shut off the flow of money. And they passed the tax bill. And we saw the Coke network shift $500,000 over to Speaker Ryan. It, right out in the open. This at a time when 60% of the country couldn't cover a $400 emergency expense. That is an important reform that we need to see from the Democratic Party. Uh, we're the party that stands up for working people. Uh, all working people, and we always have been. But to truly um, align ourselves with the interest of working people, I think we need a clean break uh, with corporate donors that are, that are funding the party. Um, so I have led by example in that. I've sworn off corporate donations in the campaign. Uh, despite that, um, 
there's been enormous groundswell of uh, people, ordinary folks supporting the campaign, and it's really encouraging to see. We just passed uh, 500 individual, individual donors online recently. And uh, really, it's about ordinary folks taking the campaign into their own hands and making the changes that they want to see in government. And uh, I think that not being under the influence of corporate money is one of the best ways to win back trust of voters everywhere, uh, especially in places that have been leaving the Democratic Party for years. We have a lot to gain from pushing a national uh, jobs effort. And that would mean, uh, for example, there are 5 million jobs open right now in the skilled trades that we need uh, to work through trade schools and community colleges to make sure that people needing work can get the skills they need to fill those jobs that are open right now. I think that would be a promising uh, effort. I think um, apprenticeships. Uh, should also be something that we really focus on. There are a lot of companies that uh, need workers who can train them in-house, and we need to make sure that we rebuild that pipeline uh, to place people where they're needed right now. Um, we have a lot of infrastructure to rebuild, trillions and trillions of dollars worth of infrastructure on all things, water, uh, roads, bridges, airports, shipping ports. All of it needs an update. And uh, that means an unimaginable amount of work uh, where we could put people in those skilled trades who are earning good wages to work rebuilding the country. We all get a benefit from that. And I think a good example there is right in our own district, even in places uh, you know, as well off as Granville, we know that lead in the public water, uh, the public school water systems is a problem. And uh, we could make sure that we're putting people to work to get that uh, out of our public schools, keep our kids safe, put good wages in the pockets of workers that end up going back out onto Main Street when those folks go shopping. That is the goal that we need to push and we need to make sure that the government is making efforts to drive unemployment to zero so the economy competes for workers and raises wages. To do that, we can put people to work on these public projects. Uh, but it's also worth mentioning that while unemployment is low, wages are low too. And that's why part of my campaign will be supporting a $15 minimum wage. This issue has got to take top priority because action on this should have happened yesterday and before then. We've known that this was happening, that humans are causing climate change for decades. The politics around it have simply got to change. We've got to be brave and stick up for bold policies and campaign on it, all of which I'll do. I think the solution, uh, my preferred solution, would be putting a price on the pollution that is driving uh, climate change. We have not had a true accounting for the true cost of burning fossil fuels. A couple of groups have put out studies showing that a small price on carbon directly refunded to American households. There are a bunch of different ways you could do this. But let's just say you put a price on carbon, you refund all of the money raised to American households, everybody gets the same amount, we could change it if you want. But if you just did that, a $15 per ton price on carbon needs hundreds of dollars every month directly to American households. That is a way that we could discourage pollution, address climate change, raise money from the problem, and put it back into the pockets of Americans, all without increasing the size or scope of government. While this is an, a really large challenge we, also have to, we, we all have to deal with, it's a big opportunity. Ohio knows how to make things. This district knows how to make things. We should be making uh, solar panels and the parts of solar panels and wind turbines and the same thing there, light bulbs and uh, insulation. We should use this problem to reinvigorate American manufacturing. Uh, we get dual benefits from that. But the, the point is we have to have the courage to act which has been absent in our congressional district for 17 years. 
I'll say this. I, I can, I, uh, a lot of my friends, a lot of my family, they're Republicans. And, and for what it's worth, when I'm going out into the rural parts of this district, uh, I've got a personal story that I try to communicate. And my personal story is why I am involved in politics to begin with. And it's because I grew up in one of these tiny working class towns on the east side of the state in the Ohio Valley that was thoroughly left behind. And uh, it was a town of 3,500 people. We had factories that employed thousands. Uh, that was years ago. And I grew up when none of those jobs were available, where Walmart warehouses were the only thing in town, where um, our trade deals and the policies that we chose devastated our manufacturing base and the opportunity that used to be available to people. And I saw that kind of suffering growing up. And that is what gave me a commitment to get into politics and do something about it. And when we go out into these rural parts of the district, that's, uh, that experience is something I understand personally. And it's what a lot of people have felt in Mansfield and in Zanesville and in the rural parts of this district that have been left out of the kind of growth enjoyed in Delaware County. This is a really Republican district, but um, deep down we're all Americans, right? And I think what people want from politicians going forward is a commitment, especially in this district, is a commitment to actually show up in every part of the district. To show up, to make yourself available, to answer any question, to talk to every voter, to know that you're not bought off by corporate dollars, uh, we're going to do all of those things. We have held a town hall in every county of this district, except for the tiny slice in Marion, and we're going to go there really soon. Uh, but yes, it's, it, it's about showing up and saying, I feel the pain that's happened here uh, and making yourself available to everybody. We've done that in this campaign, and we're going to make a promise to hold regular uh, town halls once we're in Congress. And I think it's important for me to acknowledge um, we have had a Congress of mostly white men, and my candidacy doesn't do anything to change that. Um, so it's important for every candidate like me, I think, to make an effort to surround themselves with diverse perspectives and make sure that when it comes to women's issues, when it comes to any other issue that I don't have personal experience with, that I'm going directly to uh, to women to listen to what kind of solutions they want to see in Congress, what kind of representation they want to see. Uh, that involves showing up and, and asking questions. It involves uh, making sure that staff and the people that have my ear uh, are a diverse portrait of not only the district, but the whole country. Congress represents everybody. So we've tried to do that. We'll continue that effort in Congress. But as far as policy, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pro-choice, and uh, that is because I think this is a really intimate issue, and uh, at the end of the day, the only person that should be making choices about women's bodies and their health should be women themselves. Uh, when it comes to reproductive uh, rights and health care, we should make sure that insurance uh, covers things like contraceptives and that access is available to all women up and down the, the income uh, ladder. Um, we have in Ohio some of the highest rates of infant mortality, and that has to deal with um, access to health care uh, for women, for children, and the inequities that are on the ground right now that have to be solved. So I'll stand up for those in Congress. And um, you know, lastly, we want uh, equality for everybody, but we don't have it, and we have a lot of improvements to make. You mentioned equal pay for equal work. Uh, we still have work to do there because it's not uh, where it should be. So uh, all of those things I'll work on in Congress and make sure that we're hearing directly from women about how to solve them.